Hello and welcome to The Faith Perspective, live with Andre Achak and me, Keith Newbronner, on Catholic SG Radio. Now, The Faith Perspective gives us an opportunity to discuss issues or events in the church and in the world. Now, two weeks ago, our Archbishop William Go issued a pastoral letter, and it was entitled, Come Back to Me with All Your Heart. Now, that, of course, is a title or is the start of a song that we know so very well, the hymn Hosea. And we've been singing that for years and years during Lent, right? Now, in his letter, His Grace also exhorted all of us, actually, to come back physically to worship in church. Now, the pandemic is totally under control. We've, in fact, loosened, uh, you know, all our safe management measures. And also, in fact, just a day after His Grace uh, released his pastoral letter, the government actually announced that they were, you know, easing things up on the safe management measures. And that all came into effect on the 29th of March. Yeah, but after two years of online masses, which has essentially brought mass to us through our devices, perhaps some of us aren't so convinced that we should return. <laughs> Maybe we just don't see the need to anymore. So to share his thoughts with us on this matter, we have our guest today, Father Cornelius Ching, Assistant Parish Priest from the Parish of St. Francis Xavier. A very warm welcome, Father. Thank you for joining us. Yeah. It's good to be here. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for allowing us to corner you. <laughs> <laughs> Again. <laughs> Again. <clears throat> okay, Father. So what is going to happen is actually Keith is going to rattle off huh? yes. uh, a, a list of some reasons or excuses that we roughly know that individuals are giving, right, to stay away uh, from coming back physically to, to church. Okay, go and ahead. Really, yeah, really, and just to be very clear, <laughs> I speak for myself huh, because I genuinely have thought and rationalized these reasons in my own mind, okay? And talking to friends also, I've heard them say these things. So these are real, real reasons, okay? So firstly, reason number one, since online mass is still available, and I can still receive spiritual communion, do I really need to go to church physically? I ask you a question. Uh. You prefer to stare at your girlfriend's picture or you prefer to hug and kiss your girlfriend? Oh. <laughs> You're asking a man who's going to get married very that's soon. Why, yeah. <laughs> that, that's why he's on, <laughs> on tape and on camera. Yeah, that's why. Uh, okay, you better answer this right. Huh? Yes. Both. I like both. Uh, which one do you prefer better? Uh, it depends on the mood. Uh. So ah. sometimes, you know, I don't feel like... So when you, so when you quarrel with your uh. girlfriend, then you just... You, you don't even want to look at the picture. But let's say if you're in a good mood and you want to connect, I'm sure the picture is not enough. Mm. You know, same with God. I mean, of course, if you feel that God is somebody that you can just put aside, then of course, it doesn't matter. But if there's something that you want to connect, there's something personal mm. that you want to connect with God, then of course being there physically at Mass. And I say, for us Catholics, we have this great privilege to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. And not only that, sometimes when we talk about Holy Communion, we forget that Holy Communion, communion comes from two words, common union. And mm. I don't stand alone. I'm with my brothers and sisters in the whole community that comes together. Mm. And you receive Jesus. Eh? I say, this is not... Biscuit. You want biscuit, huh? you go to KCBC or where you buy one packet. <laughs> Take three times a day. It goes very well with kaya and coffee. Mm. But this is Jesus, body, soul, divinity. You know, Just like being with your girlfriend physically is different. And I'm sure over the last uh, few days when you have all the stories of the reuniting families in Johor Bahru, people are moved to tears and all Absolutely. that. Absolutely. And for me to, to see the church more full, I, I remember when I was celebrating Mass the first weekend of April, to see more people in church, it, it moved me a bit. La. But then uh, you look at the side and uh, then you see all the empty pews. Uh, mm. People are like, ah, yeah. You know? Yeah, that personal touch in our faith is still important. Very good. Very nicely answered. You had me there with your response, <laughs> but I've got more reasons, okay? So reason number two, bookings are still required for weekend mass, and that in itself is a turn off, okay? Let's be hey, honest. But only weekday, mm. I mean weekends only, you know, weekdays you can just walk in, eh? Yeah, but you know, weekday I'm working, it's busy, you know? But that I'm, is why, yeah. weekdays, you don't have to book. 
You mm. finish, you finish work here, you can just walk next door. Yes. You know, Catholics are very lack of a better term. I want to say weird creatures, but they're very interesting <laughs> creatures. You know, we come to church, and then usually, ah, uh, the first few pews are empty. Mm. You know, Chinese got this saying: they leave for the house yong tea. I hope not in the church, lah. <laughs> no. oh but when we go for a concert, we pay money and we want to get the choicest places. Right. Right. You know, we go for a football mm. match. We want to get the place with the best view. We go for the concert. We want to go for the place with the best view, the best acoustics. But uh, when we come to the church, we leave the best seats. Uh, give other people a chance. <laughs> you know, and. If this is something that is important to you, I guess you will go to great lengths. I'm sure you read about the article in the newspaper about the swatch. I, I'm mm. not. I'm not trying to advertise <laughs> for swatch and omega. Of course, I, I don't yeah. mind if they give me a complimentary time. Piece, <laughs> but, you know, the the queues. If this is something of value, yeah. the booking should not hinder you. Mm. You know, but if this is something not of value, then of course anything is an inconvenience. So. Booking, I feel it does two things. Number one, it helps us in our commitment to say that I'm going and I'm going to commit to go. And uh, in time to come, there is also another um, regulation that we have to abide with also, the, the number mm. of capacity that the church can safely hold. That's correct. Uh, so it is still needed when we have um, a chance that the church is going to be filled to capacity or beyond capacity. But at the end of the day, is this... How much does God mean to you? There are people who book, and and even when the bookings are so difficult, mm. I have people that come two, three times a month for weekend masses, which are so difficult to book. They tell me, "No, Father, no, first three minutes, three minutes is all booked up." Mm. Yeah, I say, "Yeah, thank God the priest don't need to book. If not, you won't have priest for mass." <laughs> <laughs> so bookings, I I do admit bookings are difficult, but. Mm. As of April, we have increased. Some parishes have doubled or even tripled their capacity. I have also got feedback from parishioners. Parishioners who are very uh, happy to come back and they say, "Well, Father, now I can get my mass. It's so easy. There are always mass laws, you know." But if you don't want to, then you always have the you no. Know, um, but so difficult, eh? Mass all full, eh? Mm. You know. Of course, the the popular slots will be full. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Uh, they will be the first to be full. <laughs> Just like the Good Friday, 3 o'clock service. I don't know why everybody wants to go for the 3 o'clock service. <laughs> uh, but th I think that is the auspicious time. Uh, mm. you know. But right. uh, if it is important enough to you, I guess it will make the effort. Uh, my only concern is that if you have a big family. So I know mm. a family, every booking they need to make for nine people. Wow. Nine. Because they have uh, grandparents, they have their own family, their um, brothers, sisters, all come together with that. You know, nine people in one booking. That's true commitment. Eh? Yes, and and yet, yet, okay, I see them at least twice a month. Wow. Mm. See, so wow. nine people. You know, sometimes they, they come. They say, "Father, you can only get eight, or you can only get seven, but they still come. Mm. So does it mean enough for you? Mm. If 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 you're, I hate to use this analogy, lah. Give sorry. Yeah, go ahead. If your girlfriend means enough to you, you will make that reservation at that beautiful restaurant. I don't know how many Michelin star. <laughs> mm. Three months, six months in advance. But if not, then uh, I think Lao says the Tuta store got space. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. If it means enough, then the booking, you will set time aside, and and. For your information, my parents, my family has the great privilege of me going back mm. home. I, and I, I say I go back. I try to go back home every Sunday to have dinner with them. You know, after that, they may forget how I look. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> and I offered, you know, I said, the booking is difficult. Uh, let me know when I come back and celebrate Mass for you. And they told me, say, no, let us try to book first. Mm. Wow. Yeah. That's and that's great. coming from my own parents. Mm. And, and then they book. And now every week, you know, they have mass and they are very happy and they have managed to book for Holy Week. You know, thank God to the increased number of uh, the capacity that uh, the churches are already doing. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay. 
So which which, which, which restaurant you going? Which <laughs> one? Uh? Actually, got anniversary coming up. Yeah. Ah. Just remind me about that. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. First two reasons clarified, answered really, really well. Now we come to the third one. Okay. So, Father, I'm not sure I want to be in a large crowd of people just yet. You know, with the easing of measures, people are all out in droves and there's just so many people and it mm. still seems a bit unsafe. It's better to be cautious, right? Give it a couple of months and then come back to church if I see the situation is okay. Mm. You know, this is a very real thought and actually a very scary thought. Mm. I had a fantastic start to Lent, really. Because you know why? I caught COVID on the day before Ash Wednesday. Oh my. <laughs> so I had oh one my. week of isolation. Oh dear. No, mm. and people ask, oh, Father, who do you catch it from? Where do you catch it from? I say, I don't know. I meet so many people. That, yeah. that concern is real. But if you look at what the measures that our government is putting in place as well, mm. uh, although now we, we go out into the open, we don't need to wear our masks, you know, um, sure. there are still many people who put it on. Mm. for safety, even in the malls, we are required to, you know, um, there is still a certain amount of safety and what they call precaution that we need to take. Yes. Uh, whether if you come back to church, if you don't come back to church, and it's, of course it's enclosed place and all that, but in the restaurant, I feel it's worse. One meter apart, no? Mm. I'm talking and then Singaporeans seldom eat quietly. They, when they <laughs> eat, they talk, the <laughs> saliva is all over. Mm. I feel that is even more, um, maybe put in a, not to not to put it in a bad way, but I feel that is even more dangerous. Mm. See? But I do meet families, honestly, who to protect and, and it's an agreement among all the family members yeah. that uh, they say, okay, we are not prepared to come back to church yet because of the crowd, because all the churches are already air conditioned and all that. And they don't go to malls. Mm. They do their grocery shopping online. If they need to get something, it's just to the supermarket or to the wet market to buy the stuff and they come back and they spend that time at home. Mm. If, if that is a genuine concern and that is the genuine feeling of the whole family, then I feel, yeah, at least you are consistent. But if you say church crowded, then you go to shopping mall. You know, my goodness. I mean, San Francisco Saviour, our nearest big mall is next. Try to go to next on the weekend. Oh, there's next to no space. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Junction 8 as well in Bishan. You know? yeah. Yeah. And, and now with the opening up, all the malls are starting to pack up. You see? So unless you, you don't do any recreational activities, you see. And the other thing is also this. Do we trust that um, the Lord will watch over us? Do we trust that the Lord will, mm. will give us what we need? Maybe, mm. maybe, yeah we may be unfortunate enough to get COVID. But then again, yeah, many of us are already vaccinated. We have very mild symptoms. Maybe it's also time to get some rest, get some personal time. Good time to get COVID during Lent <laughs> because it's personal time with yourself and with God. Absolutely, uh, mm. yeah. That's, That's a perspective. A slightly forced <laughs> retreat. Uh, but uh, don't say Father Con say this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh yeah. dear. So it, it is true, yeah, especially mm. now with the churches opening up, there is no more uh, social distancing because all of us are required to be masked up. Yeah. Okay. So it can get a bit um, apprehensive for some. We'll be like, are you, are you sitting so close to me? Who are you? Uh? Mm. Two years ago, never mm. see you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 So <laughs> it, it can get to that. That's why some of the churches are opening up slowly. They are not going full capacity yet to give people the chance to first come together, to get familiar. And then later they can pack them a bit closer to fuller capacity. Yeah. Right. So we are also looking at that. That's why some people are also commenting. Why why y'all don't go full capacity? Go all the way, lah. Government say can already, what below 1075%. Mm. No? Yeah. But they say we are also taking small gradual steps to help our people ease into it. And they, of course, there are some who are very enthusiastic and you see them rubbing yeah. shoulders and they are very happy yeah. to be back and they see their friends, their familiar faces, you know. Yeah. So we do have a wide variety of people who are coming back and yeah, different comfort levels. But generally, I want to say the churches in Singapore, we are very, um, what do you call, conscientious in our safety measures. Uh. You know, we do this in fact, our churches, uh, we, we can't disinfect the parishioners. <laughs> <you know. laughs> but we, we try our best to minimize the spread of uh, this. But then again, the truth is, 
during COVID, we have all these restrictions. Mm. During non-COVID time, when we are not wearing our masks, you have somebody who's sitting next to you, cough, no, <coughs> yeah. off and on. You have the person who sneezes and, and blows his nose or her nose next to you. I, I feel you're more prone to getting the flu, man. Yeah. Mm. Although, you know, nobody really dies of the flu, but that is still dangerous. Yeah. 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 So there, there are there are dangers, I, I do admit, but you know, we take it with a measured response in that sense. Right. Mm. So Father, okay, so maybe just to sort of uh, you know, round things up, huh? after hearing all the <laughs> excuses that Keith <laughs> could come up with, and as he said, you know, we, people are thinking that way as well. Yeah. Maybe if you can just uh, give us a few more considerations as to why we should be mindful about coming back to church physically. Mm. We may not be aware, you know, but the okay. We may not be aware that the Catholic Church has seven sacraments. Mm. <laughs> okay. All the seven sacraments cannot be celebrated remotely, and there's a reason. You look at the ministry of Jesus. He goes round connecting with people. In ministering to people, it is very different when you speak with somebody over the phone. Mm. over a Zoom call, or to be there with that personal touch. Even during COVID, I still have people that I meet up with, you know, during the times when uh, masters were not um, back full scale yet. You know, there are people who, who do drop me a message and they need to talk. I mean, over Zoom, of course we can, but it's, it's so different. It's so yeah. different, you know. If you are busy at work and you give your loved one a call, you give your wife or your your husband a call, you know, it satisfies some need. But nothing beats going home after work and seeing them. You know, of course this I'm talking about yeah, husbands and wives who love each other. There are some who don't want to go home, I know. Mm. I was like, ah, going back to see my spouse again, Alama, <laughs> the one, my children, Alama. You know, but if there's genuine love, there's they're looking forward. No, especially like, you know, if, if you had just had a newborn child, mm. you want to see the child, you want to to cradle that child in your arms. There is that personal touch that is important. And it's present in all our seven sacraments. You know, just like confession, people ask me, Father can do confession over Zoom or not? I say you can do confession over Zoom. I cannot do absolution over Zoom. Uh, mm. Ah. Correct. Big difference. Even when ROM, Registry of Marriages, allows us, uh, licensed solemnizer, to do what they call Zoom solemnization. You know, um, the, the truth of the matter is that we can't. Correct. Because there's that sacramentality involved in that sacrament that needs that personal touch to be there. And for us, you know, we have always said that the priest is in persona Christi Capitis, but we forget that Jesus is also present in my fellow brothers and sisters who come. Mm. And I said that this feeling of community. And very often we compare ourselves to our Protestant brothers and sisters and say, wow, they got a community, you know, they are so close together and all that. But we say one thing and we do another thing. You know, there is a push towards forming communities over the last, I would say, the last 10, 15 years mm. in the church at least. You know, OYP is forming communities among the university students, the youth, the young adults. You know, CSC, after the CR, they are also forming communities, encouraging people to go into community communities. We have the small Christian communities, you know. And why is it important? Because there is that personal touch there. To see you, to hear you, to feel you in person is very different. And for your reason, this is why we're having a live recording. <laughs> it is not Zoom. Yeah, absolutely. It's different. The, the energy is different. And like I said, all the sacraments needs that personal touch. And what is even more important is that the sacrament of sacraments, the source and the summit of our faith, the Eucharist. I, I cannot I cannot DHL it to you. <laughs> you know? To mm. receive it in person, to receive it physically, sacramentally, to consume it, that is itself an act of faith. Mm. And maybe, maybe sadly, uh, for some of you, only the mass can bring you that. 
And there are people who come because they want Holy Communion. And they only want Holy Communion. Mm. But there are some people who come because they appreciate the fullness of the Mass that has been existing even before us during the time of the early apostles where they break. You know, they went to the temple to hear the scriptures and then they went home to break bread. So, come back, don't shy. La. <laughs> <laughs> shy, shy. Yeah. <laughs> we pretend la, we shy sometimes. <laughs> but very good. Thank you so much, Father. So mm. far, it's... I think you've quashed all my reasons. <laughs> I got I got another I'm better thinking more. Not not say a better reason, uh, but mm. one one thing I really enjoy. And actually, uh, it's in the last page of the Catholic News. Oh. Mm. Yeah. How to feed your children, the faith being there physically present. You know, one thing that I really enjoy is when children come to mass with their families. And of course they will make noise, they will mm. you know, sometimes I meet the parents after mass and they will be very embarrassed and say, Father, you know, just now, you know, my, my son was the one making all the noise. I say, no, your son was responding to all the responses and my <laughs> questions. Bring them back because if they don't come back now and they don't feel their closeness with the church, yeah. then I would not be surprised when they are into their teenage years and they don't want to come back. Yeah. And after that, um, who will be their teacher in morals? The world. And we know the world, you know, sometimes the, the moral values that they teach, not exactly the, the most correct. Nah. See? And children come back. You know, the other thing that when, when children come face to face with a priest, is sometimes it's very scary, you know, mm. because, you know, you do naughty things, I bring you to Father from confession, and Father will scold you. <laughs> you know? yes. But there is that personal touch of the priest, of the community with the child to feel to, to allow him or her to feel welcome. Mm. You know? And that love that we, we can the care, the concern that we can show the child. I say this is the church. And what, what touched me is this sometimes I'm I'm nice with the child, of course I mean so tall with my cassock. <laughs> sometimes a child comes up and then he pulls my cassock and say, Are you Jesus? I also see. I, I, I don't think I look like him. Jesus is supposed to have beard and long hair. You know? But the child sees God in the church. Mm. So parents with young children especially, you know, sometimes I do understand your concerns. We we have parishioners who give you dirty looks. Sometimes even priests can get a bit irritated and, and mm. yeah, tell you to hey, bring your child to the cry room and all that. But still bring them back, you know, and parents who are coming back. Um, you know, at home, you can pause the mass on YouTube. Yeah. In the church, you can't pause the priest. Mm. Or pause your child for that yeah. matter. <laughs> Correct. You know, but I do understand the, the struggles and I always tell parents, um, this is your sacrifice. This is your sacrifice. Christ has his sacrifice for the mass and it happens on the altar. But parents, your sacrifice for the mass would be you trying to help your child to follow the mass. It is not easy because you, you are taking care of this, you know, two, three-year-olds, and then yet you yourself, you are trying to pray, you know, but this is yeah. your sacrifice. And very often, you know, we, we don't think much about it, but this is also called yeah, the sacrifice of prayer. Mm. Absolutely. Nice words, Father. Oh, very nicely put. Now, Father, I've got another question for you. And this one actually pertains more to your experience these past mm. two years. During this time, we call the pandemic phase and all of that. So as a priest and a shepherd, how has it been like for you, really? Wow, horrible. <laughs> Need to learn how to use Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> mm. <laughs> Need to use how to use, I don't know what else. Uh, so, so many software, you know. Mm. And the, the beginning part of the, the pandemic, I, I have my youth and my young adults who were trying out all the different software, all the different platforms. Mm. So I remember at one time, I have three, four platforms installed on my notebook. Uh, then after that, they say, Father, this one no good, that one no good. No, <laughs> Learning how to, first learning how to, to talk and to get their attention, that is not easy. Mm. Yeah. It's really difficult enough to give a, a session to young people. And I, I do work, quite a fair bit with young people, even even older people, you know, the more mature, same thing, you need to catch their attention. Okay. 
that life to life is really difficult. Yeah. You can see me gesturing, you know, okay. uh, sing and dance. No, <laughs> <laughs> over the screen is even tougher to keep that eye contact. You you keep the eye contact with with a friend is easy. With mm. a camera is easy. Okay, mm. with 25, 30 people on the screen, I you keep eye contact like that. <laughs> <laughs> Tough. That is one why one reason why some priests are not very comfortable with um, giving online sessions and all that. Then you mm. need to learn to manage the software. Mm. Yes. Doing up your slides is already one thing. Now they can really scrutinize all your slides. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. Learning how to manage that and to speak. Then if anything does uh, crop up, you know technology, uh, when you need it to work, it doesn't work. Mm. You know, and it, that is one one thing that we are struggling with, uh, many of us, over Zoom meetings. And of course, uh, after two years, uh, many priests are quite quite used to it. Yeah. Okay? The initial part also, um, for us to be a priest, our life is be is to be with the people. Yeah. It's very weird when you wake up in the morning, you go down to the office or you walk around the church and then the gates are closed, no cars are inside. Mm. Um, the emptiness is not only in the church. And I'm very sure I speak for a lot, if not all, our priests. The emptiness is also in our heart. How mm. can we reach out? No, yet, yet we don't want to be the one that is initiating everything. And this is also why, for me personally, uh, I adopted a wait and see attitude for a period of time to see whether the community can initiate on their own. Mm. Ah. See, so imagine Christmas, all the priests in the cathedral suddenly the cathedral collapse after the renovation. Of course, it won't. <laughs> mm. You know, without the presence of the priests, can the community now take charge of their faith and? form themselves and come together in prayer, come together in worship. You know? And many communities started their own rosary. They meet, they met online. I have auntie, uncles who are 60, 70 years old who learn how to Zoom. Some don't even have a computer, so they Zoom over the handphone so small. <laughs> and, and they learn. That is they true. Learn. And, and that is really, really, really edifying for me to know. Right. And... When slowly the, the country opened up, when we can have people back and all that, you know, people started to come asking for sacrament or reconciliation, starting to come asking for some counseling. Or sometimes they just want they just want the listening ear of somebody who seems to be neutral. And they start to come. And we start taking appointments and all that. Then of course, masses as well. Some of us we do not know how to maneuver during the mass. Every time we come up with a new policy for the parish or the diocese come up with something, then the government sends out news. Oh, more liberalization. Then we're very happy, you know, we chase that. <laughs> Open here, can do, cannot do this one. Then after that, the government say, oh no, the numbers are high. <laughs> ah, delay a bit. So we are also stuck. Absolutely. Ah. So that, that struggle, I mean, of course, we have our lay people helping us, but at the end of the day, um, the parish priest is still the one that needs to make the ultimate decision because if anything goes wrong, we cannot tell the lay people, hey, no, not me, like, you in charge. Eh. Mm. Then uh, go and arrest him. No, it's still the parish priest whose head is on the chopping board. And to, to balance all this is not easy. La. You know, I, I'm not the parish priest. I'm an assistant priest. I thank God uh, I've worked with parish priests who involve me in their thinking process and their... Um, what they call their, their management process. And I do give my few cents worth. And yeah, I leave it to them to make the decision. That it is not easy to balance all this, mm. to balance the needs of the parish, to balance when, to, to make the call when is the right time to call the people back. Because the, the thing you want is the people to come back. But the yeah. thing you don't want is when you call the people to come back and then suddenly, you know, there's a new variant or something right. and then the cases go up. And then, mm. People will be apprehensive. Should I come? Should I not come? Same for like over the last two years, um, our youth camps, our catechism camps have all been stopped. You know, only in the recent, maybe the last few months that we started to bring them back. The personal touch with the youth is needed, is important. Right. The camps we know, those of us who have organized camps, uh, the part that we catch them is when 
everything stops after the night session. Then you have that personal one-to-one -one time over supper. Absolutely. Now they say cannot, now must bento. How mm. to supper with bento? <laughs> you cannot bento potato chips. La. <laughs> you know? So these are the, the Absolutely. constraints. Absolutely. Then we have the number constraint where we, we used to be able to chill with the parishioners to get to know them. In Singapore is like that. La. We talk like that, la. everybody very stressed. <laughs> we talk over food, huh? Oh, suddenly the gut come down. That's true. And they will talk about everything under the sun. All the good thing and the bad thing. Their father, <laughs> their mother-in-law, their wife, their children. Yeah. And that is where you get to know them. So even during the pandemic, there are people who call up or email me, Father, do you still do house blessing? Mm. Do you still do anointing at home? My reply to them is very standard. If you feel safe that I go, I will come. Uh, according to the government regulations they allow, mm. I will come. Mm. If you feel that, but I say you got to know, I do meet a lot of people. Correct. If you feel safe, I will come. I will come and bless your home. I will come and anoint your elderly, you know, not so well um, parents. Uh, I will come. And sometimes it's also very, very unique. La, because when I go to a home, the of course I, I wear my mask. <laughs> Mm. You know, so I'll be at the doorway with my mask on and then when I walk in, suddenly the family will be scrambling for their masks. <laughs> because father wear masks, you all better wear masks. Mm. You know? And they say, this is your home. I, I'm coming in, I do not want to bring anything to you. But this is your home, please be comfortable. Yeah. 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 So these are also the, the what they call challenges. Because the, the body language um, also comes through the facial expressions. I can only make eyes at them. Yeah. Mm. Thank God I got the Josh Lum. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> Father, I just want to take you up on, on, on this, uh, this particular challenge also that the church had. I mean, over the last two years, truly, I think a lot of people felt that um, the parishes were challenged in a sense of you actually having not for people to come to the church, but rather the church going to mm. the people. So I think that's a good thing in a sense. Um, and it sort of, you know, is a little bit of a repeat of, you know, in the old days where the priests used to walk, you mm. know, and they, they used to go to the parishioners' houses and all of that. But just share with us, I mean, during these two years, can you share with us, some initiatives that you know the parish was able to come up with so that you know you could keep in touch with as, as you said you know so many challenges already technology was a, was an issue and then for people accepting technology and having to work with it and make it work for you so can you just share with us some of those challenges so one thing we had in san francis savior was this uh initiative by my parish priest. It says, you know, we organize people who do not know how to use Zoom. Mm. No, because at the time, you, you still can't come back to the church. So, who do not know how to use Zoom, who do not know how to give sessions over Zoom, right. do sharing, share, share your slides and all that. And we, we gathered these people, okay? And uh, thank, thank God we have a, what they call a multimedia person full-time working for the church as well. So, she organized and she gave, um, yeah, classes in that sense, teaching them how to, you know, mm. how to mute, unmute themselves. Well, I tell you, this sometimes <laughs> is a big thing, no? They will yeah. talk and talk and talk. They say, you're not, you're not, uh, we can't hear you. Then they talk louder. <laughs> <laughs> they have not they have not unmuted themselves. themselves. Correct. This is Zoom you know? literacy. Maybe. Correct. So, so simple things like that, it is a challenge. Um, people who have never given session before, how to do sharing, how to do splitting into groups, you mm. know? So still is the connectivity, but because we cannot meet face to face. Right. Then when we can meet face to face, then all these restrictions, uh, group of five, all must be mass and all that. No, then we also have a very active uh, SMO group, uh, safe management officers who, who ensure that we can safely meet within the church, the government regulations and all that. No, these are initiatives that um, the, the lay people help. It's not just the priest being the the policemen and all that, but it's the, right. they, they know who to call. They say, we want to come back. We want to have a physical meeting. Mm. Um, how can we do it? Mm. Catechism, we want to come back. Uh, how can we do it? Right. You know? So some is because of, uh, you need to do ART and all yes. that. Huh? 
We have initiatives by our choirs. They they want to come back and sing. They say, never mind, uh, ALT, test, test, uh, never mind, we pay. Mm. And Barry says, so, no, you cannot. No, you cannot sing. You cannot pay. You're coming back to sing. Mm. So for Christmas, I'm very glad we had the choirs to come back to sing. We we funded their, their ART and yeah, it uplifts the mood. These Wonderful, these are some yeah. things that we can do. And also the part about you saying going to church and then after that the church coming. That's why I tell the older folk. One thing when I when I visit them, they always share, you know. Uh, sometimes I meet them. Actually most of them are, are you know, dialect speaking, you know. Say wow, Chinku Bokusia Tung. Bopiang, car boy, kia, no, very long I go to church. Leg cannot walk here, pain, back, back, back pain. No, I'll be going, and they share with me, no, I'll be going to church, you know, this church, I'll be helping in Novena Church, I'll be going to this church to help the canteen and all that. And they said, Wow, now so sad. I said, Now is the time for you to rest at home and to pray. And now, ah, like what you said, you cannot come to the church, the church comes to you. Oh, wonderful. Yeah. Home communion, home. Confession over land, and and just to tell these people who who ask for the the priest to visit that they are important enough for our time. Mm. I guess that is that challenge also to fit all these things into our schedule. But still, that like I said, that personal touch. Yeah, you you receive holy communion from your son who goes to church in the morning and brings the host back for you. And you receive holy communion from a priest who comes and visit you. Different. Very mm. different. And really? even that, if you cannot have a priest to come, to have a communion minister, a representative from the church who come and to bring that to you, right. is, is different. Is it, that's where mm. the church comes to you. No, yeah. But then again, there are also people who are very scared that the priest come like, because the house messy. <laughs> then they you, you see all their dirty laundry. <laughs> no, not the physical one. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And they... Some are a bit apprehensive, you know. Mm. But after the first visit, they, they do find out that yeah, actually, father doesn't come to judge us. Yeah, father mm. comes with the the idea to to bring really to bring Jesus literally. Uh, sometimes it's the Holy Communion, mm. sometimes it's the sacrament of, of anointing, and sometimes just to pop by and say hi. Yeah. yeah, bring bring that, and and I guess the biggest headache we face is that. As a church during COVID, like I said, it's keeping in touch. Yes. Mm. You know? So um, during the circuit breaker, um, one parish had this initiative that the priest personally calls the parishioners home just to see how they are and all that. You know? Wonderful. Sometimes they get scared. Like, what, Father calling me for what? <laughs> 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 what did you know? I do? Or what do you want me to do? <laughs> yeah, but sometimes just keeping in touch and say, how are you? You know, uh, Just let you know that we know um, the challenges and all that, anything we can do for you. Mm. So these are, I'm sure these are some initiatives that not only uh, maybe St. Francis Xavier has, you know, maybe some other parishes would have had their own as well. You know? Right. Mm. And we we cannot use the same measures for all the churches because the dynamics, the demographics is very different. That's true. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I mean, no parish is homogeneous yes, in that sense. Yes, yes. Yeah. Right? All unique and different. Absolutely. Mm. Yeah. So, Father, you know, gathering all of these lessons, you know, all of these things that was unraveled during the pandemic of how to be church, what church really means, how to bring church to the people. What are your hopes for the coming weeks and months for our local church? Uh, first, hopefully, the measures get ease more. Mm. Hey, but now, no, can drink after ten thirty. <laughs> now can go disco and nightclub for dancing. <laughs> so it is. It is starting to move towards um, an um, opening of the community. Uh, we can mm. travel across the causeway and all that. My question to you who are listening or watching this video is this: la. Are you going to cross the causeway into the church? Mm. Oh wow. I still look forward to the time when the church is packed. Of course, now with uh, fire safety and all that, we have uh, new regulations to follow. Yeah. Uh, um, we priests live for the community. We want to be in touch. We want to welcome you back. But we can only do so much. You know. Mm. Um, 
I do admit Zoom is convenient. For me to be present at the physical meeting, I need to take my iPad, take my notebook and all that. For me to do a Zoom meeting is very easy. I just stare at my computer screen. You know what's the best part? When the fellow is boring, I alternate tab, then I watch my YouTube. <laughs> I'll play my game. Mm. Yeah. Mm. And, and my, my off the record talking with some of the, the youths and all that, that's what they do. Over catechism class. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> Over school classes. Yeah, that's true. So, yeah. But we, we want you back. For us, it is easier, or maybe for me, it's easier over a Zoom meeting, and I've gotten the hang of doing a talk over Zoom and all that, but mm. the energy is different when you come back live. Yeah. So I hope that the people do come back. Bring your children back, you know. Bring your old folks back. Not old yeah. folks, ah. Huh? Bring your more uh, matured parents <laughs> and all that back. Young you know, at right? heart. Young at heart. There are many churches who have already been um, equipped with uh, wheelchair facilities and all that, you know. Yes. And um, yeah. Parishes also give certain priority to wheelchair bound or those who are not so physically able to move around, you know. Mm. Communion is specially brought to them. These are things that small little things that we do, not just for the masses. We're going to start having more camps. CSC really starting to have their retreats. Mm. Yes. Um OIP has been having their retreats, you know. And then yeah, this this issue of Catholic News, we also had this uh where is that? Ah, balik kampong. That's come right. back. You know, <laughs> ONE right. is having a retreat to invite people to come back and to rediscover their faith again. Mm. You know, we want you to come back. We want you to come back, not just to make us feel good. Mm. Okay? Actually, circuit breaker very good because every day just Netflix and YouTube and <laughs> Disney Plus and you know, but that is not that is not what the church exists for. That's not what the priests exist for. Yeah. We want to meet you, we want to to encounter you, you know. More importantly, we want you to be able to physically find Christ, to find Jesus again in the sacraments, in the physical building of the church. You know, the adorations room, the adoration rooms around Singapore are also starting to open up, you know, one by mm. one. Uh, to be able to adore Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament is a great privilege. I say sometimes we Catholics, we don't understand this beauty that we can behold Christ in the Blessed Sacrament, the physical presence of Christ. Mm. So he said, we want you to come back. I, I, I dream of a more vibrant church now with the synodal process that is going on as well. You know, um, I hope that people will come back and share, yes. uh, share their thoughts, share their dreams as well, share how the church has walked that journey with them and how they feel that the church can continue to walk the journey with them. And um, it's not just the priest that builds the church. You know, if it's just the priest that builds the church, then ultimately it's the bishop that's handling all the weight. You know, and mm. um, yeah, but I, I don't think the bishop got very big shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> Yours bigger. Yours bigger. <laughs> yeah, but we build community together. Indeed, mm. yeah. indeed. And come back to feel that vibes, that familiar face once again to reconnect with each other. And ultimately, through that, to reconnect with God again. Mm -hmm. If I can just share with you someone who sent to me, you know, uh, her thoughts when she managed to finally go back to, to church, right? And then she said, Today, choirs and the singing by the congregation filled the church. Mm. The procession into the church resumed and seeing the choirs, uh, you know, present, the priests and the altar boys and lectors processing, it made my tears just flow. And I just couldn't sing at all. I was so caught up in this awesome feeling. So glad that things are getting back on track before Easter. Sad though, many seats are still vacant. Mm. The choirs are so enthusiastic to come back. Mm. And as I mentioned, there are some choirs who are willing even to pay for their supervised ALT because they know that it uplifts. Mm, you absolutely. Know? I share this another thing that uh, maybe blow my own trumpet a bit. Uh, <laughs> the choirs were surprised when, was it Christmas? When I started chanting the mass. Ah. Mm. Yeah. Because... Um, they were surprised you were chanting or that you could sing? Which one? Yeah. Or both? <laughs> <laughs> surprised that I didn't chant out a tune. <laughs> And they say, it uplifts them. Absolutely. Mm. 
Of course, this makes the difference, you know. It does. And of course, to, for us to understand chanting, um, yeah, it is more beautiful than, of course, speaking. Yeah. The Lord be with you. That, that echoing through, and I'm sure many of you will enjoy Bishop's Mass, it's also his chanting. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. You know, that, that is uplifting. Things are coming back to normal. You know, only thing is this. Sunday Mass used to be no singing and all that, 45 minutes finish. Now it stretches to an hour, maybe slightly past an hour. Yeah. But with the singing, the songs, I feel the mood is so different. Some people are still a bit apprehensive because after two years of, you know, literally, uh, like the Chinese yeah. community say, go and wang misa to watch the mass. You know. Mm. Now they can participate um, in the singing, Absolutely. not just the responses. Uh, and to to maybe maybe they've forgotten how to sing like that. <laughs> <laughs> But it's starting to come back. I know many churches have already started. Uh, choirs do not need to be tested anymore. They yeah. can sing. They just need to keep that social distance. That's right. And now MCCY has allowed us to sing with our mask on. That's right. Mm. Officially. Yes. You don't need to sing in the choir, you no, know, hoping yeah. nobody hear you. <laughs> so that that is a, the beautiful part. And of course it bliss. but like like your friend who messaged you, there's still the empty seats. Huh? Yeah. We do still do hope that. The churches will be filled to capacity. Maybe it is a problem because the popular masses will definitely be booked beyond capacity. But I feel that is a good problem to have. Yes, yeah. indeed. Wow, mm. I, and I like that shift very much. Also, you know, here as we round off this conversation, we see you know some emptiness still. Mm. But yeah. you know, for the people who do return, they do see the richness, the beauty of not just the liturgy or at mass, but also what it means to encounter Jesus mm. through one another. Because there's only so much you can encounter Jesus, I mean, through ele electronic means. I yeah. mean, that has proved to be very helpful. Indeed. Uh, and it's better than nothing, of course, these past few years. But only so much that can do, you know. Mm. And having you in the studio actually yes. energizes <laughs> us and has uplifted us because we've also had some months of, you know, just Zoom con conversations. And sometimes we do feel, okay, we can feel the spirit moving. Yeah. But here today, I think we have felt it even more. Absolutely. Really. Absolutely. <laughs> Thank you for bringing Jesus to us and for also um, being Jesus to your flock these past yeah. two years. Well, Thank you for yourself. inviting making yourself available already to the people of God and to mm. us. I think, actually, you know, I think I also like to say thank you to all the priests yeah. uh, of the of the Archdiocese. You know, many or many of you, uh, you know, went out of your way, uh, you know, to go beyond uh, the, your call of duty uh, or the usual call of duty. Mm. Um, and truly, is it, you know, bringing church to the people i think many many people are also very thankful for that and we are thankful father that you are here with us so thank you so much but this is also a lesson that we learn uh. we we do see in a way the real picture of the church where people now when they have to go through a bit of discomfort to come back then we see the faith level uh. mm. which also is a reminder for us yeah to continue to form and to and reach and to empower our people. Yeah. Amen. 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 And a big thank you to you, our dear listener or viewer, for joining us on this program. Today on The Faith Perspective, we have been speaking with Father Cornelius Ching. He's the Assistant Parish Priest at the Church of St. Francis Xavier. And what a joy it has been speaking to him. I'm Keith Bronner together with Andre Archak and with our lovely, lovely guest, Father <laughs> Cornelius Ching. Thank you so much for joining us here on Catholic SG Radio.